So here we have the latest action cameras on the market. We have the Go 3, the Action 4, the Insta360 X3, and the brand new GoPro Hero 12. Well, the X3 is not really a new camera, but I think it's worth looking into if you consider a new or to get your first action camera. So today we're taking a look at the differences between these four cameras and how I use them and which of them I prefer. And hopefully at the end of this video, I can help you decide which of these cameras are the best choice for you. And this video is not sponsored by any of these brands. So this is gonna be my completely unsponsored, unpaid, unfiltered review and comparison of these four cameras. I'm gonna be completely transparent and unbiased in this review in order to help you decide which of these fits your need better. However, this video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound, which is a music licensing service which I've used for so long. And it's by far the easiest and best way to find awesome music and sound effects, but more on that later. Now, first up, we have the new, but not so new, Osmo Action 4, which has a brand new 1 over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor and a D-Log M 10-bit color profile. A dual touchscreen on the back, as well as the front, a sharpness and noise reduction controls, and a low light enhancement feature for stunning low light videos. The second one up is the GoPro Hero 12, which has the highest resolution of 5.3K and a 1 over 1.9 inch CMOS sensor, which captures crystal clear image just like the GoPro Hero 10 and 11, but it also records videos in 8x7, 16x9 or 9x16 vertical in camera without needing to do the cropping in post which is a huge thing if you're looking at it from a GoPro's perspective. Now a new feature is also HDR which is available in most resolutions including 5.3K. The third one up is the Insta360 GO 3, which offers more versatility compared to both the Action 4 and the GoPro with its magnetic backplate and a smaller form factor. In addition to the GO 3, the Action Pod has a 2.2 inch touchscreen, which can be flipped for the convenience of vlogging. And you can also use the Action Pod without the GO 3 placed inside, which just adds to the usability. The last one up is the Insta360 X3, which shoots 360 degree videos at 5.7K, which you later reframe in the Insta 360 Studio or mobile app. With the latest firmware and app updates, you can now export videos from the mobile app in 4K resolution, which is a huge step up from 1080p. This camera is the most versatile of them all because it records everything, so you'll never miss the shot. Now, if you're looking to buy a new action camera for the first time, it could be hard to decide which one to get since most of these are now in the same price range, sitting around $400. And when a new camera is released, it's also easy to get caught by the promo videos and the way you see other people using the camera. But it's also important to know that most of these shots have been planned over time and most of it is actually rigged to make it look awesome. And yet, it does look awesome. But before you decide, you have to consider your use cases and which of these cameras you actually prefer rather than going for the one which has the best hyped up promo video. So hopefully this video can help you make a better decision based on what you need in a camera. And talking about my personal experience, I want a camera that actually adds something and makes it more fun to use as well as making it easy to use when I use it. By that I mean mounting options, reliability, user experience, and which of the cameras gives me the least amount of frustration. So let's take Epidemic Sound for example. This adds a ton of spice to my trips and to my videos because it's so convenient and easy to find music and sound effects when I'm out traveling, which takes away all the frustration of finding awesome music. I can just take one of the clips I have recorded with either of these cameras and just upload and sync. And based on the video clip uploaded, the algorithm will find suitable tracks for that type of video, which is amazing and a huge time saver. So it just adds to the quality and my experience when I'm out testing these cameras. But testing the Action 4 GO 3 X3 and the GoPro Hero 12, there is a difference in image quality as well. Well, the GoPro has the highest resolution at 5.3K up to 60 FPS and it also shoots HDR. The Insta360 X3 can record up to 5.7K resolution, but this is of course again spread throughout a 360 degree field of view. And the final export after reframing the 360 footage will look similar to 2.7K when exported in ProRes at 4K resolution. And the Action 4 does only shoot 4K videos up to 120 FPS, but has that new 1 over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor which is a huge deal if you're looking to mix your day shots with night shots. 
The Go 3 has a normal video mode with 2.7K resolution up to 30 FPS, as well as free frame at 1440p up to 50 FPS, and has features like horizon lock and adjustable aspects in post. So you can export the exact same clip in multiple aspect ratios for all your social medias. It's also the smallest and lightest camera out of these four, weighing only 35 grams. Now, if we take a look at the differences from 4K to 5.3K, it's not that noticeable when you're putting them side by side. But it also depends on where you watch this video and where your audience is watching from. And if you watch two different videos, let's say one on Monday and the next one on Thursday, for example, you will probably not see the difference at all. And at the end, do you really need that 5.3K resolution? Do you need 4K resolution? And can your computer, whatever editing device you're using, handle 4K or 5.3k resolution. This is also something to consider before you buy an action camera. Otherwise, you'll end up returning the camera or in worst case, buy a new computer, which is more expensive than getting all these cameras together. So here we have four shots, one from each camera. But the difference now is that you see them as a comparison, which makes it more obvious. But on paper, the GoPro is the winner because it has that high resolution coming straight out of the camera. And looking at the differences from the Hero 10, 11, and 12, there's not much if no difference at all using the normal profiles in natural or vibrant colors. So if you're looking to get a new action camera, don't decide based on the resolution, but rather the versatility ease of use and whether or not the camera will add something different when you're out shooting, which will benefit you the most, which has the better price and which one will give you the best bang for the buck. Now let's talk a little bit about low light. Even though the Action 4 has amazing low light capabilities, it seems like it applies to a limited use cases, one of which is going from bright to dark at speed. The GoPro 12 does also have this issue and stabilization on both cameras are far off and the footage comes out unusable. The X3 however is completely different and I don't know why but it could be because of this is gonna sound really strange but white balance it could be because of auto white balance so look at these two clips from the action 4 and the hero 12 as soon as I enter the tunnel stabilization is fine but when the white balance is corrected by the camera it starts to shake and the stabilization immediately turns off whilst on the x3 it's all smooth even with the white balance set to auto i'm not saying this is the reason for the shaking in the hero 12 and the action 4 but it definitely is interesting so if you're able to test this out yourself please let me know the results down in the comments below and i will dig deeper into this when i have a chance so let's talk about battery life there's always that question, will the camera overheat? The short answer is probably not. So when you're using an action camera, regardless of brand, you will most likely use it outdoors, either on a selfie stick, a car, or a motorcycle mount, or use it in a way that provides some sort of airflow to the camera, which helps the camera cool down and significantly decrease the chance of overheating. But just to show you a quick worst case example here, here's a comparison I did in the office with 25 degrees Celsius and no airflow. Now, like I always say, for me personally, it doesn't really matter if the camera records for 10 hours. I don't mind. As long as I have 10 minutes of continuous recording, I'm personally happy with that because I never film clips or shoot videos longer than that because it will be so much waste of storage in my opinion and I will have to go through so much footage just to pick out that five seconds of usable footage or the five my five favorite seconds of that clip of that two hour clip five seconds is what I'm going to use. So in that case, for me personally, it's better to use pre-record or Hinsight on these cameras because all of them have that. And that means they will always capture 10 to 15 to 20 to 30 seconds of video without recording. And this works really good with the X3 because it records everything around you. But let's say if you use the GoPro, for example, and you use Hinsight, that means the camera always have to be faced towards the action that is about to happen uh, in order for this to work. But one awesome thing with the X3 is that it shoots 360 videos. So regardless of how you place the camera using pre-record, you will be able to capture it anyway. Now, another thing to mention as well, if you did not know that, you can actually pull out the batteries of these three cameras. You can't do that on the Go 3, but you can pull out the batteries if that matters to you and you can plug a power bank into it and they will still turn on and run. So you don't have to have the batteries plugged in in order to record videos with these three devices. 
But as of using these cameras for a longer time now and also doing this comparison, I was able to use all cameras for about three hours on a single battery when recording on and off and having the cameras turn off when not recording. And overall, there has been no issues or uh, no indications of overheating when it comes to using these four cameras outside where I have the airflow. So that's also something to consider. I haven't really been able to overheat these outside here in Norway. We'll see when I get to these states if any of them overheat. But of course, if you're mainly gonna get a camera to use it as a dash cam, I would probably say the Action 4 or the Go 3. But in reality, it also comes down to a few factors like resolution, a bit rate, a frame rate, and the settings you use when you record your videos. The higher you go in these settings, the more likely is the camera to overheat and less record time you'll get because it will drain the battery faster regardless of the camera overheating or not. So let's say with every single camera release, they are all advertising with insane amount of battery and record time. But here, all cameras have been tested in the lowest resolution in a controlled environment. So 1080p at 30 FPS and some minor airflow. This is the controlled environment that these cameras are tested in. So this is basically how it's advertised and tested when it comes to these cameras. Now, the other differences between these cameras are of course color profiles. The GoPro's natural color profile is of course one of my favorites and the one that I use all the time. Now with the Action 4, I use the D-Log M 10 bit color profile and with the Go 3, which has 10 color profiles actually, uh, I prefer the flat color profiles as it gives me the best overall look and it's actually pretty easy to correct and grade in post. Now with the X3, the X3 has a vivid standard and log where I find vivid to give me the best look for my taste. Even though these are somewhat the same when it comes to color science because they are from the same brand, I do prefer vivid on the Insta360 X3 and flat on the new Go 3. And also if you enjoy the color grading that you'll see so far in this video, uh, I have a discount on my signature LUTs, which you can find down in the description below. But of course, if you're just that run and gun and you don't care about color grading, you don't care about anything, and you just want to tell a story, just want to hit record and uh, you know put the clips on your timeline and be done with it, then the normal color profile coming from all these four cameras are working just as well. GoPro log, it feels a little bit mushy. It's a little bit mushy. It's uh, nice if you have time to sit down and color correct it or if you have developed some LUTs for it which I actually have so it's a little bit easier for me but if you just want to shoot with the normal color profile from either of these cameras it's just as fine but there is something to consider though the GoPro Hero 12 is the only camera that shoots 10 bit in any profile whether it's flat natural vibrant or the GP log the GoPro is the only one that has 10 bit and you're not going to get that with these cameras the Action 4 only has 10 bit when using the log M which means you will have to color correct your or image, which you don't have to do with a GoPro Hero 12. So that's also something to consider if you really want to get that 10 bit color profile. Now, exporting and preparing your clips to be edited is also something to talk about. And there is a few different ways given by each brand. And when you're out traveling, you might want to show your followers or your friends and family what you've been up to by sharing some videos to social media like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, or Facebook. And the fastest way to do this is, of course, to use the mobile apps. So we have the GoPro Quick app, Insta360 app, and the DJI Mimo app. And unlike the Hero 10 and 11, I've actually had an amazing experience with the GoPro Quick app, and I'm actually able to connect my GoPro Hero 12 instantly without having it glitch out. Even though I can mainly see myself using this app only to grab a few photos from videos, it's nice to finally have a camera that works and connects to the app without any issues. As for the Action 4, we have the Mimo app, which has been running flawlessly ever since since I first started using it. I still think DJI lacks some of that punch when it comes to app editing compared to the last one, which is Insta360. It feels to me like Insta360 is updating the app to continuously satisfy the user rather than having the app only to support firmware updates. But since we have 360 and free frame videos from the X3 and the Go 3, it's natural that the Insta360 app has more to offer. And even though this is one of the few times that I've actually had a working GoPro 
GoPro connection, which has allowed me to edit videos or at least test them out for a few days, I do prefer the overall experience of the Insta360 app, even though I had a great experience with my GoPro edits. Insta360 also have their studio app where you can edit your videos in the same way as the mobile app using tracking, speed changes, and keyframes. But it also allows you to export your footage in progress to get the best possible image quality out of the X3 and the Go 3. Now, after you export your videos from the studio app, it's time to put them back into Final Cut Pro or the editing software you prefer. And when you're editing your videos, it's also important to have some good music, which is where I use Epidemic Sound. This is not only a time saver when I'm out traveling, it's also a place where I can stack up my favorite tracks in different playlists so I can easily grab the one I want when I'm ready to edit. Another cool and simple feature is also that you can see the tracks you've already downloaded and used before, which is great, so you don't end up using the same track over and over, which at times might just be weird. I also find it really easy to find suitable tracks for the videos that I make here on this channel, since everything is so well organized. Now, whether you're into the same type of videos as I make, or if you're more into cinematic videos, I actually made a cinematic drone video with the Mini 3 Pro from my last trip to Hawaii, which a lot of people seem to like. So to fully understand how to use Epidemic Sound for the better, I'll leave a link to that video down in the description below, and I highly recommend that you check that out and just listen to the music and how the sound effects is basically highlighting the nature of Hawaii. It, it's a really nice video and I really, I'm really happy with that video. So make sure to check it out down below and also hit that thumbs up on that video as well. That would be appreciated. Now you can also test Epidemic Sound for yourself for 30 days free of charge with my link in the description. And you can test out and see exactly what I mean about the, uh, the website and everything. It's so awesome. So make sure to click down below, grab your free trial now and you can upload and monetize as many videos as you want during those 30 days. Now, let's move over to the versatility of these cameras, which is the most versatile. And what does a GoPro actually mean about the world's most versatile camera? Really, is it? I don't know. So starting with the Action 4, it has a magnetic quick lock system with easy options for horizontal and vertical aspects. Mounting or changing the camera from one mount to the other is definitely faster on the Action 4 without buying additional accessories. The GoPro has that higher resolution of 5.3K as well as changeable aspects in camera, which makes it just as easy as the Action 4. But the Hero 12 also offers a quarter inch mounting screw on the bottom, which now makes it easier to to mount as well as include other accessories. It also has an 8x7 aspect which you can crop to 16x9, 9x16 or 4x3 which is beneficial if you want the most out of your frames. Now the Go 3 does only shoot in 2.7K at its highest, which is more than enough for what people need. The Go 3 is also the smallest of them all and offers free frame video where all settings like aspect, frame rate, stabilization and more can be changed in the mobile or desktop app regardless of the settings used when shooting the video, which is also something to consider. You have more flexibility. The Go 3 has a magnetic backplate and a magnetic quick lock system just like the Action 4 where the accessories or the action actual mount has an additional quarter inch mounting option, offering a wider option of where it can be placed. So already here, the Go 3 seems to take the lead in versatility as of the overall use. The X3 though records 360 videos at 5.7K, which you later reframe in the studio app or on your phone. And this is the camera which gives you the most freedom when shooting your videos and when you're going through the edit process later. It also has the same mounting options as the other cameras, but without the magnetic quick lock. However, Insta360 offers a fast and secure quick lock system themselves, which I'm a huge fan of. I use this with my X3 as well as my GoPro Hero 12, and it just makes it much faster. It's an additional cost to the X3 though, but it's well worth it. And also, since the X3 shoots 360 degrees of video, you can change the aspect to whatever you like later in post, and even create some amazing effects which you cannot do with any of the other cameras. Now, let's move over to the user experience when it comes to these four cameras. 
Now, after using the GoPro Hero 12 for some time now, I'm actually pretty satisfied. Even though I feel like I'm waiting for something to happen, even though it has played out nicely so far. Probably because I had so many issues with Hero 9 and 10, and it just becomes something I'm aware of and constantly think about when I'm using it. But in form of versatility and user experience, it's exactly the same as before. It shoots in one direction and can be mounted in the same places as any other action camera. But now, a little bit faster for, for me since I have that Insta360 quick lock system, which I can just mount on the GoPro and then just snap in place and it is all secured. But as of the overall use of the camera itself, it's exactly the same as before. And at the end, you can be just as creative with this as you can be with the Action 4 and any other camera and vice versa. But I do wish GoPro made an update to the sensor to make it at least a little bit better than the GoPro Hero 10. But since it runs with the same processor and sensor as the Hero 11 as well and the, the older cameras, there is no difference in image quality nor performance. The GP2 processor is slow and the overall feel is laggy and it's less responsive than any other camera I have. It also takes some time to turn on and off, which is not a deal breaker, but it's something that I notice each time. The Action 4 on the other hand has a new optimized sensor with twice the pixel size and the camera is overall better optimized with a responsive touchscreen on the back as well on the front. And if you get a bunch of these magnetic mounts, you can place it anywhere on your most used items like your helmet, FPV drone, selfie stick, your motorcycle, anything really, and just swap between the mounts as you record your videos, which is not something GoPro offers, nor do they have accessories to buy to make this more convenient. And if you're making shorts or Instagram reels, you can also use the included cage with the Action 4 and just swap between horizontal and vertical position and hit record. Even though the GoPro has this built-in function for changing aspects, you still have to go through the settings and manually change this to vertical or horizontal if you're not using the 8x7 aspect. But of course, if you want to shoot vertical videos, you can also hold the GoPro in a vertical position, just like you see with the Action 4 here mounted in a vertical position. But if you want this to be mounted in a vertical position so you don't have to hold it, that means you will have to buy some extra accessories in order to make that work. So that's also something that the Action 4 is offering straight out of the box, which GoPro is not. Next one up is the Go 3, which comes in the same category as the Action 4 and the GoPro. So after using it for a few months now, I'm quite happy with the overall performance of it and the latest update just made it even better. Now, being able to use the Go 3 and the Action Pod as two separate devices is pretty awesome. And one of my favorite things about this tiny camera, it's the perfect camera for traveling, hiking, and when you do things with your family where you don't want to bring bulky equipment. It's however the camera with the lowest resolution at only 2.7k, which is almost half of what the GoPro shoots in, but to me it really comes down to reliability. And with some tweaks in post here and there with some adjustments, color correction, color grading, you know, the footage coming from the Go 3 looks really good. Now another thing to know about the Go 3 is that it was actually made for fun. It was made to capture those moments of fun which you normally wouldn't be able to capture if you took a bigger camera or even another action camera. Because it's so small, it's more convenient to to carry around and mount using the included accessories like the head mount here which I just snapped onto my hat and I can just snap this in place like that and you know I can walk around and do whatever I want to do. They also have the magnetic pendant and what I mean is that it's so small it barely has any weight to it, which means it's going to be more comfortable to carry and it's going to be easier to use. And you can just snap it back into the action pod when it's out of battery and you need to recharge it, which is another awesome thing to consider. But when I'm out traveling or doing behind the scenes shots, the X3 is by far the most versatile, fun and convenient camera to use. It really makes my life easier when I'm out shooting these videos because it gives me that extra spice, it's a different perspective and I have full freedom in post, which is something I really enjoy. To me, it's still gonna be the perfect travel camera and it's the first camera I grab regardless of activity. To be honest, I've never had so much fun using a camera and not to mention the freedom I have when I shoot 360 videos. You're 
you're basically a solo film crew. And also love using it on my motorcycle. In fact, if I'm not comparing cameras, it's the only camera I bring because of the 360 videos. But of course, I'll end up using a head cam as well, which is either the Action 4, GoPro 12, or the Go 3 along with the X3. But if I could only choose one camera for all activities, it would still be the X3 because it is a 360 cameras and I just love having the freedom in post, the freedom uh, when I'm out uh, shooting my videos that I don't have to think about anything. I can deal with everything when I come back from the trip, which means I can enjoy the trip more. And another thing is that you can also use the single lens mode on the X3, which shoots 4K 30 FPS, which is what I'm using. So I can also use this as a regular POV action camera, which is a huge advantage for me when I need to pack a light or just want to bring one camera for the conveniency. And most of my editing done with the X3 is also done in the Insta360 Studio app, which means once the export is done, I can place this on my timeline in Final Cut Pro or upload it directly to social media. And the editing process in the Studio app is also pretty simple. You open the Studio app and select import footage and then browse through the files and select the one you want to preview. And here you can adjust the framing as you want and create keyframes or track. And if you find this hard to begin with, you can also enable direction lock, which will keep the framing of your choice consistent throughout the video. I also have a dedicated video on keyframing in the Insta360 Studio app and also how to get the absolute best image quality from this, which I will leave down in the description below if you want to check it out. So the X3 is in my opinion a must have. Like I said, you capture everything and you can mount it anywhere, just like the Action 4, the Go 3 and the GoPro 12. But it simply adds more freedom and you don't have to change it around because it records everything, which is the main advantage when using a 360 camera. But if you're more into POV shots or you prefer a regular action camera over a 360 camera, or maybe you already have the X3, then my pick would be the Action 4 because of its versatile mounting system and that it works with the DJI mic system and the fact that it has a new optimized low light sensor for better overall image. But if you want something which is more versatile, has low weight and will cover 99% of your needs, then Insta360 GO 3 would be a good option and will also add a lot of creativity and fun to your life, whether you're a solo traveler or like to capture your daily activities with your friends and family. Now, my honest long-term review of these cameras, which is the one that I prefer the most, which has given me the best bang for my buck, you know, it's gotta be the X3. And it's actually the main camera I look forward to use when I plan a trip. To me, this adds that wow factor I'm looking for uh, when I'm out traveling, and it makes me enjoy more of what I'm doing instead of always thinking about framing. And like, did I get that shot? Do I have to go back and reshoot it? Oh, I gotta bring the camera down, I gotta check the framing, how does it look? And these are the things I don't have to think about when I use a 360 camera. Now, as for the Action 4 and the Go 3, they are in the same boat. I would use the Action 4 when I'm doing more challenging activities and the Go 3 will always be my main choice for hikes or when I'm doing activities or travel with my family because of its size and the ease of use when running after two kids. I can also see the Action 4 being my main helmet cam actually when I'm out riding my motorcycle, even though I have the Max Lens Mod 2 from GoPro, which gives gives this amazing wide view, I just feel like the Action 4 is more natural and it also allows me to have that D-Log M10 bit color profile, which I truly like. And as I can see it, the X3 will always be the main camera, which I can mount anywhere on the bike and get some really cool shots, as well as being my go-to for most activities. Now, as for the Hero 12, reliability is key. And I'm hoping this is on the better end compared to my Hero 10 and 11. Even though I have all the cameras I prefer, I do look forward to bring the Hero 12 back to the States for our next trip. Now, as of accessories I use when I'm traveling, I'll leave some links down below there so you can check them out, but there's not many accessories needed to get the job done. But of course, I have the 3 meter selfie stick from Insta360 and the remote controller for better controlling my camera. Even though I can do this with my Apple Watch, I still prefer to use the remote. And also, don't forget to grab a copy of my signature lights down there as well, which is discounted if you want to spice up your videos and make them look unique. So there you have my honest long-term comparison of these cameras and which I prefer to use for different scenarios. 
Now, which of these you get is gonna be completely up to you, but I just wanted to share my experience using these cameras in order to put things into perspective, and hopefully I could help you in deciding which of these cameras is the best fit for you. If you already have a favorite, let me know down in the comments below. Links to everything will be down in the description as well, including the motion graphics for Final Cut Pro, which you have been seeing here on the screen. And don't forget to drop a like if you found any value in this video, and if you are brand new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next video.